Hi, I'm Catherine Kutenbrauer, and I'm going to read to you today from the very beginning of my new novel, All the Broken Things. 1984, Bear. Look at the bear licking Bo's toes up through the metal slats on the back porch. Bo is 14 years old, and the bear, not a year. The bear is named Bear. When the boy spreads his toes as wide as he can, Bear's mottled tongue nudges in between them, and this tickles. Bear craves the vanilla soft ice cream that drips down Bo's cone and onto his feet. Bo imagines it must be glorious for Bear to huddle under the porch and lap and lick up the sweet cold treat. He imagines himself tucked in down there pretending to be a bear and how wonderful it might be to have someone drip sweet vanilla ice cream right into his mouth. Bo crouches, peeps down between the corroded slats, holds the cone over his feet and waits as the ice cream melts and then slides through his toes. The first drips shock and then his body warms the liquid up. And it is a velvety feeling, the ice cream streaming everywhere, making a mess of himself, the porch steps, and Bear's fur. Squatting, Bo waits with his free hand for the long piebald tongue. Bear curls back her lips to smiling and presses her fangs up against the bottom of the porch and there it is. Bo grabs the animal's tongue and feels it slip wet from between his fingers. I got you. Bear shakes her head, banging it against the porch and huffs at Bo. She knows this game. Still, determined to taste the ice cream and salty boy skin, she shoots her tongue out again anyway. Bo bides his time until the tongue is so busy probing between his toes and up along his foot that he is sure Bear has forgotten about the game and then Bo nabs the tongue at the base and hangs on laughing. Bear tries to swing left and right, but she is caught. And then a great paw comes up, sliding along the porch slats, and Bear begins to moan so plaintively that Bear lets go. Oh, Bear, he says, oh, Bear. Bo loves the tongue sweeping coarsely against his skin. He loves talking to Bear and being sure that he is understood, and also that he is understanding her. He loves Bear's stink, her thick coat, and the way her body lumbers around the backyard and through the house when he lets her in. He loves the expressions on the faces of people when they first see her, and he loves when Bear swats him so hard he falls over and that it is play. He makes a couple more attempts at grabbing Bear, more to feel the soft tip of her tongue than to win the game. When most of the ice cream is gone, Bo sits down on the edge of the porch with his legs dangling and lets Bear clean his ankles and up his calves and thighs. She's come out from under the porch. Bo coos and pets her, and behind her, behind, pets her head and behind her ears and down her muzzle to where the skin hangs along her throat. He marvels at the way the fur swirls over her eyes, parting in the middle, and how elegant that is. The animal loves to be touched. She moans with pleasure. Bo holds out the cone, tells her, gentle, soft, and gives it to her when her teeth get too close. Bear places the cone on the ground and licks all the ice cream from it, then eats the sweet cone, along with the sticky napkin with which Bo held it. Bear is three times as big as she was when Bo first got her. Soon she won't fit under the porch and Bo will have to construct a shed for her. Besides, the weather will eventually turn and she'll want to hibernate, but now it is May and they are enjoying the first ice cream of spring. Bo cups Bear's face and draws her sleepy eyes up to meet his. You're mine, he says. Do you understand? The bear tosses her great head. She does not like to be held still for long. And then she gently mouths the hem of Bo's t-shirt, sucking at it like a nipple.